In the news this week, shocking new statistics on indigenous deaths on the streets are seeing advocates call for more housing for the vulnerable. A WAMA News exclusive. Meanwhile, homeless indigenous woman Alana Gartlett's family wants answers about her death. Yes or no exclusive news poll shows whether viewers agree that all WA hospital workers should have mandatory vaccination. And on Western Perspective, Marie of Usyk's bid to be the Fremantle Mayor, plus Dr Andrew Miller's comment. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lowe and Sarah Smith. Good evening. The tragic death of another homeless person in WA has triggered renewed calls for real, long-term solutions for the underprivileged. Although it's been widely reported that 56 homeless people died on the streets last year, we have new shocking statistics uncovered by UWA Research. Reporter Brianna Melville has the exclusive details. It's been a cold and wet few months for anyone in Perth, but for people living on our streets, that chill has been felt tenfold. We can exclusively reveal tonight that according to new UWA data, 28% of homeless deaths last year were Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander Australians. This is a shocking statistic considering that Indigenous Australians only make up 3% of the population as a whole. In the deaths last year, 28% of uh, the people were um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander. Uh, that's actually, it's a terrible stat, but it's not surprising because we know that homelessness is hugely overrepresented amongst Aboriginal people. Head of UWA's Home to Health research team, Dr Lisa Wood, says the Australian government needs to start providing accurate data on homeless deaths to the public. I think the, the issue of homeless deaths is hidden around the country. There just isn't the data and uh, that's what we're trying to do is to bring it to light and say that in the same way that uh, there is public awareness of uh, deaths in custody, there's public awareness of uh, deaths from family domestic violence, there's public awareness of road fatalities, all kinds of things where we look at the circumstances of death and we would argue that in the same way we need to look at the circumstances of these really premature young deaths amongst people who are homeless. Public data is also a key part of positive change according to the National Coordinator of the National Suicide Prevention and Trauma Recovery Project, Jerry Jajatos. It will galvanise um, uh, radical empathy, it will galvanise outcomes, it will, it will galvanise the cultural shift which will demand something needs to be done. In recent months, the state government has announced the rollout of various housing first initiatives across the state, along with new crisis accommodation centres and safe spaces for homeless people. But Lisa says these are only short term solutions. If all you're doing is putting people into short term crisis accommodation, it, it's like a band-aid that doesn't even stick, really. It's, it's not addressing the underlying issue and that's not going to be the thing that uh, ultimately will enable people to restore their health. Jerry says permanent public housing can be easily rolled out in WA thanks to the record budget surplus. For five billion dollars it can actually wipe out all unmet need in terms of all forms of homelessness. Five billion dollars can build 18,000 public houses, social housing. There are currently about 1,200 homeless people in the Perth and Peel region and due to their circumstances they are dying much earlier in life than housed Australians. Brianna Melville, WAMN News. The family of a homeless Indigenous woman who died in Perth CBD are demanding answers into a death wanting to be the last homeless death on Perth streets. Alana Gartlett's family said she was left out in the cold after being evicted and they want a stronger push for housing for the homeless. Nelson Liu reports. Grieving for the loss of a woman made homeless, an Indigenous family demanding answers for a death on Perth streets that should not have happened. It's upsetting mum, it's upsetting us. Alana Garlett is the latest homeless death in Perth, her family devastated. She was our sibling. Alana was found unwell opposite the Wesley Church, struggling to breathe and talk in cold temperatures on the morning of June 18. She was rushed to hospital but later died, leaving behind six children, her family wanting answers. We are waiting for answers off the coroner, but they are saying to mum it's a cardiac, but then we've got to, we've got to you know, you've got to understand too, it could have been the cold weather that triggered off everything. Where, where we got her buried, like with the people that, you know, done that burial and that, said we couldn't see her, we couldn't view her. You know, we want answers for that too. 
They say it would not have happened if she had received public housing and wraparound support. My sister was left out in the cold, you know, being homeless. 56 homeless people died on Perth streets last year. Alana's family is joining the push for more action on housing. You know, people are waiting for houses. And, you know, they want to be housed. And people who's got the pool, please pull harder. They don't want her death to be in vain. We're trying to make this the last death on the streets in town. A vigil for Alana will be held at Parliament House next week. Nelson Liu, WAMN News. Following a recent COVID-19 breach in WA hospitals, an exclusive WAMN news poll asked viewers whether all hospital workers in the state should be vaccinated. As the Delta variant continues to wreak havoc in the eastern states, the latest results can be more clear. Helene Fung reports. There are widespread concerns about the number of healthcare workers not vaccinated against COVID-19, with the federal government's September deadline to have the jab fast approaching. WA may face a healthcare staff shortage when the deadline passes, but the mandatory vaccination debate on all hospital staff itself has been widely controversial. A WAMN poll revealed that 62.2% of viewers support the policy. AMAWA President Mark Duncan-Smith says that while he agrees with the policy in principle, he does not believe it is wise until after we have more Pfizer vaccines. The healthcare system is going to be inundated with COVID even if we open up at 80% vaccinated. So I think it is appropriate that at the appropriate time, when there's appropriate stocks of Pfizer, that it is mandatory for, for healthcare workers to be vaccinated. Otherwise, find another job, basically. The Australian Nursing Federation, on the other hand, are not surprised about the news poll results. Secretary Mark Olson says education and incentives are important. We need to remove as many obstacles that are in the way of getting high rates of vaccination. Helene Fong, WAMN News. The WA government announced strict protocols for the shipping industry, which includes turning around non-compliant vessels. Currently, the government expects shipping companies to prevent COVID cases from boarding ships before their journey to WA. Under new rules, crew changes and visits at high-risk locations will not be allowed, and maritime workers boarding ships at high-risk locations must wear PPE and present a negative COVID test. Crew members disembark WA from a high-risk location will be required to be vaccinated. But that the measures I'll be outlining are not targeted specifically at Indonesia. We have strong economic and cultural ties with Indonesia and we want to maintain that. It's, it's not an issue for the Indonesian government, but rather shipping companies that transit through Indonesian ports. Communities impacted by tropical cyclone Saroja will be supported with the largest disaster recovery package in WA history. $104.5 million in joint state and federal funding will go to 16 local government areas for the cleanup, heritage, recreation, community welfare grants and small businesses. Both governments hope the commitment will help communities rebuild stronger than before. And so many of those communities, they are still facing a long road ahead. And so in relation to the $104 million package that will be made available to support the next stage of the recovery and the rebuild. Perth has become Australia's most affordable city to buy a home for the first time in 28 years. The latest domain house price report reveals median prices rose 12.3% to $595,823 for the year to June. Lower than any other capital cities, with Canberra the highest at 29.2%. Domain says increased household savings and demand have fueled the surge among buyers. There are renewed calls for the Japanese government to cancel the Tokyo Olympic Games, despite events already being underway. Protests are urging the Prime Minister to stop the occasion, as cases in Japan continue to spike. The number of cases per day reached over 10,000 this week, with capital city Tokyo approaching 9,000 for the first time. The government is facing increased pressure to put more countermeasures in place. 
In the United States, the Biden administration has announced sweeping guideline changes for federal government staffers and contractors, with proof of COVID vaccination required. They will also be required to wear masks, socially distance and get tested regularly. The policies are one of the Biden administration's moves to encourage its citizens to get vaccinated as the Delta variant spreads. Astronomers from Stanford University have observed X-ray radiation originating from behind black holes. These luminous echoes, as the scientists are calling them, are the first time phenomenon like this has been observed by humans. This backs up Albert Einstein's famous general relativity, as the X-rays appear to reflect off gas entering black hole before the light is bent by gravity of the hole, allowing us to see what's behind it. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. We have the latest news on our website, wamnnews.com.au. Until next Sunday evening, from Sarah and myself, wish you good health, good night. Thanks for watching. Take care. Mm -hmm.